So the question of eternal security, can you lose your salvation? Someone asked that earlier. When you have this perspective that, well, in my circle, I know Christians that when they go through hard times, they curse God. This is, this is the crux of the issue. This is the crux of the issue right here. We've defined Christian way too loosely. And the first thing I'll tell you is God doesn't have any grandchildren. I'll tell you that. I'll say it again. God doesn't have any grandchildren. I don't care if your parents knew Jesus. I don't care if your grandparents knew Jesus. I don't care if you grew up going to Sunday school. I don't, I, I don't care if you grew up in the Bible Belt. God does not have any grandchildren. We've allowed the definition of Christian. We're a Christian nation. I live in the Bible Belt. We're a Christian family. We've 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 opened up this 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 definition of Christian, and usually Christian means saved. Christians have salvation. Hello, it's kind of the whole point. Christians have salvation, and so if people are quote unquote Christian, but they've never been born again, they've never had an encounter. Are they really Christians? Right? Are they really Christians? If someone is really regenerated with the Holy Spirit, they're a Christian. And so the crux of this conversation is going to come down to how we define salvation. How you define salvation. Can you lose your salvation? Define salvation for me. Salvation is not saying a prayer. Salvation is not uh, crying at church. Salvation is not putting your hand up. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a step further. Salvation is not getting deliverance and getting a demon cast out of you. Salvation is not you going and on some mountain high spiritual experience. None of those things are salvation. That is not salvation. Salvation is when someone has an encounter with the living God, places their faith in Jesus and the work of the cross, and is born again. You can be a cultural Christian and not be saved based on how much we've appropriated the word Christian. Now. If, if someone is actually born again, which a lot of folks aren't, let's just keep it a buck, a lot of folks aren't born again, though they think they're Christian, because, I, because if I asked you what the gospel was, you wouldn't be able to articulate it to me. If I asked you what does it mean to be born again, you wouldn't know what that means. If I asked you, hey, can you show me in the Bible uh, how someone gets saved? You wouldn't have a verse to give to me. You're not saved. Hate to break it to you. You're a cultural Christian. That's, that's a form of churchianity. That's not being born again. So salvation is when God takes your heart of stone, gives your heart of flesh. It's a supernatural occurrence that happens in the believer. It's a supernatural thing that happens in the believer. I think what we've done is we've moved the goalposts so low. We've, we, we've lowered the bar so low that anyone that says anything about Jesus is like, we're saying, and this is why I didn't notice I, when I'm talking about Jordan Peterson, I'm like, hey, I don't know if Jordan Peterson is saved. Just because he's asking questions and talking about Jesus and covering access, I don't know if that man's born again. He seems to struggle with the idea of the bodily resurrection of Jesus. That's kind of an essential thing. You got to believe Jesus rose from, from the grave. You got to accept that work on the cross and a sacrifice. And, the, and, 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 and it's not just in a symbolic manner. Oh, Jesus died and then rose. And so in the same way, we need to die. We need to let things that are bad of us die. No, no, no. It's not symbolic. He literally died and literally rose for us. So the question is, well, how do you define salvation? I don't do this loosey-goosey, say a say prayer put your hand up, go up to an altar call. No, if you've had an encounter with the living God, everything changes. That doesn't mean you go on the rest of your life without sinning. It's not what I said, but you change. You are a different person. You desire new things. You are set on a different trajectory. You can't shake it. And the last thing you're going to do is curse God, even through suffering. It's the last thing you're going to do is curse God even through suffering. And so the question isn't, can a Christian lose their salvation? The better question is, can Jesus lose one of his sheep? And the sheep know the shepherd. And the sheep know the shepherd's voice. And the sheep have an encounter with the shepherd. And yes, the sheep are dumb sometimes. Sheep do stupid things sometimes. But Jesus goes after the sheep. And I believe that what God started in somebody, he will finish. I believe what God started in somebody, he will finish. So, I hold to eternal security based on the actual definition of what it means to be saved. So the question is not can you lose your salvation. It was never yours to begin with if we're going to get technical. Salvation is a work of God. Salvation is a work of God. The question is can Jesus lose a sheep? And by the way, you can hold to eternal security and not hold to limited atonement and not hold to total depravity and not hold to the other four points of Calvinism. Shocker. 
You can look up Dr. Layton Flowers on this. You can look up a bunch of different people on this. I don't hold to the, I, I, I don't hold to those. I, I hold to eternal security. I believe in original sin, not total depravity. I don't believe in limited atonement. I believe in, right? How can you deny predestination? You say Calvinists will call upon Romans 9, but what's your reputation? Uh, Dr. Lane Flowers has gone over Romans 9. That's about covenantal uh, Israel and not individuals' salvations. That's not what that's about. So you can go and do the research. If you want to do the research, I'm not going to get into all of that, but Dr. Lane Flowers has gone over this extensively, and he's debated your favorite Calvinist extensively. Guys, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of By the way, you know, you know what's so crazy? You can like what someone does in a different arena without fully embracing all of their theology. I love the way Dr. James White debates Bart Ehrman and debates Muslims and debates textual critics, but I disagree with him on, on, on Calvinism. I love Dr. Uh, Dr. James White on postmillennialism. I love... Uh, Jeff Durbin on postmillennialism. I disagree with them, Calvinists. You know you could do that. Like it's not an all or nothing thing because there are some things that are non-essentials. Calvinism would be one of them. Calvinism is not. You don't have to. Be, you don't have to be a Calvinist to be a Christian. Did you know that? No, I preached exactly what, what Chris Lasala. I preached exactly what Layton Flowers preaches. Exactly what what Layton uh, uh, Flowers preaches. And if you knew, clearly you don't, my my, my brother. Respectfully, you don't know because. If I pull up what, what, what provisionism is, which is what I hold to from a soteriology, if you guys want to know what my position is, this is what I hold to. This is good. Okay. So Dr. Dr. Lane Flowers, you guys should check them out if you are a Calvinist. Okay. So here is provisionism. So, so notice what Chris LaSala said. He said, I just said, I just, I just ascribed to Calvinism and then in provisionism, which is what Dr. Lane Flowers is, which is basically a bridge between Armenianism and Calvinism, you got eternal security at the very end. Got eternal security right there. So what is provisionism? People sin. There's a distinction between original sin and total depravity. I don't believe man is utterly and totally depraved. I believe men, man is broken because of sin, but not totally depraved. Meaning that the next one, they have some responsibility. You have responsibility. Uh, that is, everyone else is able to respond to God's appeal for reconciliation because a divine provision will be heard and understand. Oh, open door. Is the divine provision offered impartially to all, uh, to all, for anyone to enter through faith? For whoever may come to his open arms, vicarious atonement, not limited atonement, because that's remember that's the in in the in the T, the L and the T is is limited uh, atonement. Uh, vicarious atonement is the divine provision given of sufficient value for the sins of the whole world and provides a way for anyone to be saved on the basis of Christ's shed blood. Illuminating grace is the divine provision offered sufficiently to all and provides clearly revealed truth so that all can know and respond to faith destroyed for unbelief and resisting the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's drawing to God's mercy will be the divine provision of justice. And then eternal security is a divine provision that is everlasting for all true believers, for all true believers, for all true believers. So that is that that is more or less what I believe about soteriology. You guys can check out Dr. Lane Flowers, ex-Calvinist, which by the way, I have no problem with my, with my Calvinist brothers and sisters. Here's why. Because I can hold that position from a, from a biblical, I think that's the most accurate to scripture, like, like when it comes to salvation, how you get saved. I feel like this is the best framework. Provisionism is the best framework for uh, how I think this works from, from, from a salvation standpoint, how other people get saved. But I will be honest that in my own life, in my own life, I definitely feel like my salvation, and this is what you guys are going to say, I'm cheating or I'm playing the fence. In my own life, I definitely feel like in my own life, it was very much so God plucked me. It was very much so God picked me and I didn't have a choice of that in my own life. That's that's just the way it's always been, right? That's just the way it's always been. I don't feel like I have a choice. That doesn't mean I'm not I'm a robot, right? Now, in terms of what I feel like the scriptures accurately teach, I feel like it's closer to this. I feel like it's closer to this. So again, you can have both, in my opinion. I can personally be a Calvinist for my salvation while believing that God can save anybody. And people are responsible. Maybe it's many are called, but few are chosen. Maybe this is the many are called, and in my own life, maybe I'm chosen. I don't know. I don't. I don't but and, 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 and punchline: I don't need to know. We see, according to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day to day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers 
which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.